young children are able to grasp more language when they are young. That may be very true because we also have uh, young children now, I think uh, to all the participants, you may have seen young children able to understand Hindi through the films that they have watched in television. It may be through the songs that they have heard in television that goes for English also. So this means that when I am not able to understand what is being taught in the, I, I mean, what is being uh, displayed in the television, young children have the ability to do that. I have my own uh, niece who can speak Pakka Hindi even before she is class one. And I tried to talk to her in the very Kacha Hindi that I know. And she said, I don't understand that because that is not the Hindi that I know. And she learned it from television only, from what is being said. So this clearly shows that young children are able to learn uh, you know, other languages, many languages when they are still young. But the fact remains that home language is the best to make students understand. So NEP also gives much importance on teaching through home language, what we call as mother tongue. You know, there is uh, some debate, not a very big debate of what mother tongue is. Is it the real mother, the, the real mother who is speaking and the child is uh, uh, talking about that language. That may be, I, I don't know about the uh, literal meaning of what mother tongue is, but uh, I think it is safer when we say home language. So home language is usually the same language as the mother tongue or that which is spoken by local communities. So when we talk about um, non misos studying here in Mizoram, some of them will know Mizo language very, uh, you know, very smooth. We have non Mizos who are taking Mizo as MIL also, who are born and brought up here. So they may be Nepalese, but they know Mizo so well because it is the home language. So home language and mother tongue, you cannot separate one from the other much, but still, uh, literally, if we look at mother tongue, it may be the, uh, the language that is being uh, spoken by the mother. But what I'm trying to say here is that the language that we think in. Now, I am speaking in, I am now speaking in, in English, but whatever I'm telling, I know it's translation automatically in my own mother tongue. And the way I think, how I think, with what language I think, I think that, that uh, we may take it as the mother tongue or the home language. And we are more, you know, uh, comfortable with that and we understand better. So that is the, uh, about the home language. And NEP says that children should be, a medium of instruction should be in mother tongue. At least the fifth grade. Children should be taught in mother tongue at least up to class five and preferably till grade eight. In Mizoram, we talk so much about English medium schools and parents, they feel happy when their young children who cannot read or write can sing Baba Black Sheep without knowing its implications. And we are at that stage, but in every commission, even if we look at the Indian uh, educationist, like Rabindranath Tagore, Mahatma Gandhi, Swami Vivekananda, they all supported the use of mother tongue in education. So we have to also know that when we are going to give, um, when we are going to give teaching to students and we want them to learn, it is best if we give them teaching in mother tongue. But multilingualism means that we should introduce them to other languages when they are still young. So here in the NEP, it is written that high quality textbooks, including signs, will be made available in home languages or the mother tongue. So this is going to be, again, one important area that has never been touched upon. So signs that we are teaching or 
uh, mathematics, even mathematics? Because we say that in Mizoram, uh, for those who are not from Mizoram also, I am sharing some experiences which will uh, enlighten your knowledge also. Uh, in Mizoram, uh, although we talk about English medium schools, even those English medium schools, they always say that science and mathematics has to be taught in Mizo, that is the mother tongue, and students can understand better. So now we know how important the mother tongue is. And in, uh, in cases where mother tongue, uh, I mean textbooks is not available in mother tongue, we have to have teachers who can speak the local language or the home language, who will teach them. Even when the subject is given in another language, maybe in Hindi or maybe in English or whatever language, it will be given in the mother tongue or the home language. And uh, now let me try to, because I've taken so much time. Now I, I will try to, <laughs> I don't want to, as I've said, I've been uh, talking about not taking too much time, but I've taken too much time. But uh, let me come to, I will run forward to higher education, okay. Uh, higher education, there is a revamping of higher education and the, you know, uh, there is, okay, one, one thing is uh, regarding B ed, okay. I think uh, people want to know about B ed Bachelor of Education program is going to be now integrated into the education higher education system and four year integrated B ed course is going to be now given and will be taken as the eligibility for teaching in schools, four year integrated B ed. It may be BA, B ed, it may be BSc, B ed, which means that colleges will also have to, colleges will also have to offer this. And in, uh, there are going to be, as I've said, I'm, I'm skipping many of the uh, many of the details and I'm uh, jumping straight to higher education system. And the higher education system that we have now, where we have affiliated colleges and affiliating universities and some deemed universities and some uh, you know, non-affiliating universities. Now, uh, this NEP gives us three kinds of higher education institutions. One will be a university which will have more intensive research. So it is known as research intensive university where teaching and research will take place at the same time. Research intensive university. Then the second one is teaching intensive university. Teaching intensive university where teaching will take majority of the task and research research and teaching will go hand in hand in both the two kinds of universities but in the first one research and teaching will go hand in hand and uh, it will be 50 50 okay in teaching intensive teaching will take more uh, you know more place than research then the third one is a degree granting autonomous college degree granting autonomous college which means every college will be able to give degrees in their name and it will no longer be an affiliated college of a particular university so one example is mcon can give bsc nursing certificate in the name of mcon so that is one example, okay, relevant for you. So the autonomy, the financial, the financing, the administration, everything will be autonomous. And what uh, NEP envision, however, is that these standalone colleges, which are affiliated to some universities, the university in which they are affiliated will take up the responsibility of mentoring these colleges be able to become autonomous and grant the degrees. But this is going to take some time. So 
the responsibility will lie with the university which affiliates them. Then another important thing is the multidisciplinary nature of the universities and the colleges, which is given by NEP. And this is one area which is going to be quite a tough nut to crack for especially colleges in Mizoram. Multidisciplinary means MCON, you are uh, giving nursing. You may also have to give some uh, degree in Bachelor of Arts. And somebody may take one paper in nursing and another paper in economics. So it has to be, you know, a totally multidisciplinary uh, kind of uh, institution where lots of students are expected to be admitted. And it is also looking at a college or an institution, higher education institution, which will have at least 2,500 students. Now, if we look at Mizoram, we in higher education institution, in the affiliated colleges, total number of students have not come up to 20,000 also. And that 20,000, for example, if it is 20,000, if we divide it in by 2,500, we will have only eight colleges. Whereas right now we have about 38 colleges affiliated to Mizoram. So what I am trying to say today is that, although the uh, present educational uh, policy is visionary, very idealistic, the, pragma the pragmatic side needs to be, you know, uh, pondered upon and discussed and maybe expert opinion maybe need to be taken that in India we talk about states having different kinds of topography having different kinds of uh, population if we look at the population of Mizoram it will be less than the population of one uh, you know uh, one area one locality in Delhi so can we have one policy that fits for all? So we, I just want to, you know, uh, let you think this. I now I'm uh, running short of time uh, because I have stressed so much on the school education, which everyone, because you may have your uh, children, you may have your uh, students. So I am stressing so much on that where there is a different change. And we also have a big change in higher education system. But as I've said, uh, one thing that I want you to uh, think on is uh, whether we can always go for one culture, one India, or one system, one, uh, one nation, one system. India is a diverse, you know, India is uh, composed of diverse culture, diverse people. And can we go along with one nation, one culture, one nation, one system? it may not be possible, especially for states like Mizoram, small states like Mizoram, and where the communication between one district to another is also quite tough. It may be very difficult for us to reach the target that is being placed by NEP 2020. Anyway, I, am, uh, I want to thank you all for uh, patiently hearing me out. And uh, as I've said, overview of NEP 2020, you know, uh, within one hour, it's very difficult to do so, but I hope uh, you will uh, learn something from whatever I've shared uh, today. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am, uh, Professor Dicte. Uh, I think it's understandable, understandable that, you know, being the expert educationalist, the general educationalist, you are here to, you know, educate us on the overall implication of NEP 2020, which uh, cannot be short, you know, explained in a short amount of time in any way. I think you have done a commendable job of, you know, comprehensively explaining all the salient um, features. Uh, we have uh, time for a few, a few questions. I think we'll just um, uh, go on over over to uh, the question uh, area here. Um, uh, there is one question here. Is it a must for uh, autonomous college to be multidisciplinary under the um, you know, NEP 2020? So there is one question here. Uh, when we talk about a must, uh, you know, we are talking about implementation. This, as I have said, this uh, policy is uh, 
visionary, idealistic, and this is what government uh, tries to, uh, you know, drive us into. Whether it is a must or not, we have to wait. <laughs> we have to wait and see whether we are going right, to be right. imposed. Right, but right. that is the, you know, uh, what yeah, NEP yeah. wants us that we have to offer multidisciplinary uh, kind of subjects and the college also should be multidisciplinary in nature. So whether it is a must or not, we, uh, you know, we, we are still looking at 10 plus two plus three, which is being uh, given by Kothari Commission in 1966 and still uh, existed till now. So we, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, I am not the one to say, but if government changes, that may change also. So these are things, these are policies. So policies are policies. Yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, all right. Thank you, ma'am, for that clear explanation. It is understandable that since the um, NEP just have come out, so the implementation part, it may take a while uh, for us to you know, understand and actually see. So thank you so much, ma'am, for your uh, insightful exposition of such a huge topic. You have done a wonderful job. Uh, thank you uh, very much indeed. Now, um, the NEP also makes some proposal for uh, framework changes in the medical uh, education. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hello, madam. Yes, we can hear you, ma'am. Uh, is uh, Miss Kimi online? I don't know. She is lost. Yeah, I think her connection is lost. Yeah. Okay. So should I start? Yeah, yeah, madam, it's audible. So you yeah. can carry on, please. Yeah. So. I will just share my screen. Is it visible? Yes. It starts with the, I think this is the last. Yeah, yeah. Just a minute, just a minute. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Is it visible to everyone? And am I audible? Is it, ma'am? Yeah, it's audible, ma'am. Uh, okay. And it's visible also. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, 
um, as madam uh, dikte has elaborately talked about the national education policy 2020 which was re released recently and i am supposed to talk here in terms of medical and allied education but my main focus will be medical education so what i am talking over here is more about what changes are already there in line with the national education policy 2020 just talking about what is there in the nep for higher education what just madam has just discussed is it envisions a complete overhaul and re-energizing of higher education system to overcome the challenges present in existing education system and thereby deliver high quality higher education with equity and inclusion that's what madam was all the time talking about like can whether we have a similar thing across the country one nation one system but whatever the system is the existing the uh, overhaul and re revamping is to provide higher quality education and especially what madam has elaborated in terms of uh, school education the same is in higher education so what has been done or the changes in current education system through this NEP is moving towards a higher educational system consisting of large multidisciplinary universities and colleges with, the, with at least one in or near every district and with more health education institutions uh, with higher education institution across India that offer medium of instruction and programs in local languages or Indian languages. So this is what Madam was emphasizing a lot that even though we talk about till fifth standard or eighth standard of uh, education in the mother tongue or home language, uh, the higher education also is envisaging or want to change to use of instruction of uh, medium of instruction in local or Indian language. Moving towards a more multidisciplinary undergraduate education, moving towards faculty and institutional autonomy, what Madam has just been talking about that if it, uh, she was just giving an example of MCON, that if the college is doing, they will, be have, they will be able to give degree to the students which they are teaching in their own name. Mm -hmm. And revamping the curriculum, pedagogy, assessment, student support for enhanced student experience. So basically whether it is school education or higher education, both are moving towards the normal uh, road learning towards more revamping of the curriculum, including the local uh, adjustment, local languages, and taking care of the students in terms of enhancing their learning experience. Coming to the point uh, discussed in NEP 2020 regarding professional education, Especially, I am focusing here on healthcare education. Healthcare education, again, re-envisaged so that the duration, structure, and design of educational programs need to match to the roles requirement that the graduates will pay after they pass out. And the students will be accessed at, assessed at regular intervals on well-defined parameters primarily required for working in primary care and in secondary hospital. So what usually we see in terms of professional education, especially medical education and the other professional educations, we see that uh, since we are in a place, the educational institutes are in a place in a city or an urban area, it is at the tertiary level. So the care given is at tertiary level, but the students are not able to provide the same at the primary and secondary level. So definitely the changes or the uh, restructuring or designing of the curriculum is such that they are able to study and work what is happening in primary and secondary level of hospitals across the country. And along with that, since I'm talking about medical education, which is mostly uh, talking about modern medicine, people exercise pluralistic choices in healthcare. That is what we have seen, uh, seen across the country, across the globe also. So the healthcare education system must be integrative that all the students of allopathic medical education must have a basic understanding of Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Unani Siddha and Homeopathy and vice versa. So it is not just that one particular pathy is been taught to the students so they know only about that and they don't know what is happening in the other pathies and there is no 
uh, I won't say that there should be integration, but at least an understanding, basic understanding, so that they get to know that how the patients or the healthcare is been assessed, the type of healthcare is, is been assessed by the community. And also uh, a greater emphasis on preventive and health, preventive healthcare, community medicine in all forms of healthcare education. And since community medicine is the prime, when we talk about uh, medical education, the reform which the national education policy is talking in terms of medical education, I am here to speak about it. So you all must have heard that the National Medical Commission has been constituted last year and it came into force this year in September 2020. So initially the regulatory body for medical education was Medical Council of India and it has been uh, revamped and it has been dissolved. And since uh, la very last month, we have this new commission which is in force. And this new commission is in line with what the national education policy 2020 is talking about. It is talking about having a regulatory body, a board of governance, which is able to take care of the demands or the policy related activities or implementation so that as Madam said that by 2040, we are uh, moving towards the major change in terms of education as knowledge economy. So the National Medical Council, which was uh, started, I came into force in September. The main aim of National Medical Council is to improve access to quality and affordable medical education, ensure availability of adequate and high quality medical professional in all parts of the country, promote equitable and universal health care that encourages community health perspective and makes services of medical professional accessible to all citizens, encourages medical professional to adopt latest medical research in their work and contribute to the research, objectively assess medical institutions periodically in a transparent manner, maintain a medical register for India, enforce high ethical standards in all aspects of medical services and have an effective grievance redressal mechanism. So, since we are talking, uh, since last one hour, Madam was giving an over of national education policy and what all the changes which are supposed to be implemented in the future and we grow towards a knowledge economy in terms of education and being a basic right as well as the goal, sustainable development goal number four in terms of education. Uh, if you look at the healthcare related education. In 2000, we had already progressed towards millennium development goals. And since then, the healthcare education and the revamping has started. So the 21st century, we found that India is not at par with the kind of education which is happening across the globe. Though we are following modern medicine, but since the education system is not as same as compared to the global education system. So in 1997, though there were the graduate medical education regulations, they were revised and revamped in 2019. So the graduate medical education regulations is what I will be discussing and what the changes have occurred in line with ADP 2020. What we see as a document, Madam was telling that 2015, the uh, whole deliberation started and many people who were stalwarts in education have reformed it and have uh, brought into many policy level uh, changes in terms of making it equitable and inclusive. So see, in similar way, the deliberations were going on in medical education and ultimately last year in 2019, the graduate medical regulations, the revised one has come in. And the salient features, uh, what we see over here, is what in line with the NEP 2020, what we are talking about. So if you see, just see, the, look at the uh, salient features that we are talking about Indian medical graduate, the concept to be an achievable goal. So it, since it is a goal, definitely it is a very broad, but still how we can make it achievable is what the whole GMER 2019 is uh, focusing on. Then for the Indian medical graduate, the roles are clearly defined. So what are the basic roles and what is expected at the end of the curriculum of five and a half years of education undergraduate level? That is what has been defined. And this uh, definition of global competencies for each role envisaged 
through competency based medical education so since we are talking about education which has to be at par at the global level the competencies are based in the education in the change in the curriculum are such that it as it is in at par with the global competencies and each role will help in terms of that also subject based based outcomes that can be mapped to a global competencies alignment of the instruction with reasonable integration in curriculum so the rote learning or what we talk in terms of redundancy is taken care of by alignment and integration in the curriculum so that the same thing is not and the student is very much involved in the learning because it goes just now madam was also talking about that in school education greater emphasis on learner centric instruction so from the teaching oriented or teacher oriented teaching uh, learning methods it has now become learner centric instruction that is also one of the policy uh, document related highlight of nep 2020 that it is talking about learner centric so that the student feels involved the responsibility of the student is there and he doesn't feel like going away from that or is not uh, happy or satisfied with the uh, teaching greater emphasis on learning in primary and secondary care environments that's what i was just talking about that the emphasis for professional education is such that that though they are uh, uh, though they are learning or having their education in a tertiary level environment it should not happen that they are not able to cope up or they are not able to practice in primary and secondary so the emphasis of learning is in more in primary and secondary care environment and student doctor method of clinical training to have more in depth in terms of it is not just uh, teaching that this is what is it but experiential learning madam has just mentioned that what we learn from our experience is most important and remembered so student doctor method is that type of clinical training which will help them to have their experiences for the life term life long with the patients then emphasis on skill acquisition and certification even in nep 2020 the uh, it has been emphasized not only for higher education but also in school uh, education that skills are to be taught and in medical education the skills taught are not just uh, taught not just for acquisition but also certification so certification is done so that they move ahead in their curriculum and not just and not just not just for the sake or they have it in a so the whole competency based medical education is such that the students are able to the medical students are able to acquire the skills to a level of competency and beyond that as a proficiency so that's why the certification has been in play then early clinical exposure in medical education previously it was the first initial year was mostly in uh, classrooms and not much of patient uh, exposure but with the newer gmer and curriculum early clinical exposure is started from first year so the uh, the students are able to learn that what they are learning in the basic uh, sciences like anatomy biochemistry and physiology is how it is been seen or reflected when the patient has a uh, disease or health related problems the most important and very uh, eminent change which has happened in this particular uh, curriculum and the regulation is teaching of longitudinal program on attitude ethics and communication just now we were talk uh, madam was talking about nep and nep we were talking about language their own uh, home language or the mother tongue so that the better understanding and, but here in terms of student uh, the medical education or the healthcare education it is always in contact with the patients and communication is the main forte that what they are trying to tell and how we perceive and how we provide them the health services so along with attitude and bioethics communication is the main forte which will be taught all throughout the curriculum and the most important part of, uh, of this particular regulation is during the course the foundation as madam was telling foundation for the school students uh, with basic or 
<clears throat> what we call as the required uh, training same way here the foundation course is one month mandatory course for the students to start with getting acquainted themselves to the environment of the medical college uh, coming over from and school or higher education like uh, 10th uh, 11 12 standard and getting into a professional education so foundation what has to be done what are their expectations and what will be their responsibilities in the future so a found one month long foundation course is been introduced in this particular uh, curriculum through the graduate medical education regulation so with that the shared responsibility since this being an learner centric education program the shared responsibility it is not just teacher oriented or what the teacher wants to teach but self directed learning so a lot of emphasis is given in for self directed learning so that the student then self bring about what they need to learn in that particular subject and the outcomes are more varied and more enriching for the students another uh, highlight or the feature of this particular curriculum and the regulation is the electives there will be short term two month elective in uh, during the second and third year of uh, mbbs curriculum where they will be encouraged to pursue what they want to do in the future that is after they finish their mbbs curriculum so any subject or any uh, stream which they are under the medical education which they are interested in they can opt for two months of training in that uh, either advanced training or research training then there is a special time there are more than 28 hours which are allotted in uh, every year for students for sports and extracurricular activities in the timetable so that this is not been <coughs> this is not been uh, just an uh, extra time but it has been included in the timetable madam was also talking about the assessment because if you are trying to change the curriculum definitely how we assess the learning experience of the student is what, what is very important and the assessment changes under gmer are that there is formative assessment and there is summative assessment summative assessments are the university exams which happens after every uh, professional year but the formative assessments are the one which will help them to build upon and especially the skill acquisition as well as the certification so improvisation from being competent to proficient so that is what is the changes which are made in the assessment for the medical education so what we are talking about like madam has been talking about what is the nep changes or what new curriculum is going to or, or what the new uh, educational system is going to offer the same with that alignment same has been thought of deliberately since last uh, 10 15 years and all the medical educationalists have come forward with a modular training program for undergraduate medical education and that is what this features salient features what i have been talking about uh, i know as a uh, a person who is not into medical education it might be a different thing but a similar a uh, strategy has been utilized in other professional educations also whether it is engineering whether it is nursing whether it is the allied health uh, they are also trying to implement and uh, come up on with this curricular change for the uh, different type of multidisciplinary or the newer educational policy so what i am trying to emphasize over here is though there are problems with the existing uh, education system whether it is school education higher education professional education but if we try and if we try to align ourselves with what the newer education policy is talking about we can make up uh, make up this changes we can draw, bring about this reforms and uh, it will be helpful in progressing for us towards the knowledge economy in terms of every level of education not only school but higher and professional education so the whole medical education program undergraduate program is designed in such a way that the indian medical graduate will be possessing request requisite knowledge skills attitude values responsiveness with physician of the first contact of the community that is what i was talking about the primary setting 
and simultaneously being globally relevant. So right from being a local to be a global. So the competency-based education is such that they are able to compete and work in a global environment and simultaneously because of their experiences and uh, exposure to the primary and secondary setting in medical education, they will be the physician of first contact of the community. So these are the roles which has been defined under the uh, graduate medical education regulation. Five roles, clinician, lifelong learner, leader and team member, communicator and professional. As a professional course, definitely professional. But the second point, lifelong learner, is what is emphasized in the national education policy also. The national education policy, what Madam was talking about, the four components, school education, higher education, key areas of focus, and how we are going to do this. In the key areas of focus, uh, NEP 2020 talks about adult learning and lifelong learning. So anybody who is uh, into education has to be a lifelong learner to learn more through his experience as well as what he has learned through his uh, curriculum. So these are the five main roles of Indian medical graduate, which has been emphasized by the graduate medical education regulation. Now coming to the postgraduate medical education, as we all know, whether it is undergraduate or postgraduate, it is through the common entrance examination. And now in order to increase the number of specialists, the uh, medical education for post-graduation regulations have uh, made it mandatory for all the medical colleges to start PG courses from this year, that is 2021. And also recommendation is there because most of the places it is not the tertiary care or city level or urban level of uh, teaching. So two years of district residency program so that they get primary and secondary level uh, care experiences. So after completion of the undergraduate, this is what is been recommended. So these, uh, though these are uh, the policies which has been recently, the implementation is going on, and the implementation, as we talked about in NAP 2020, also that it will take, it will be happening over the time, and it is evolving. It is not that uh, it has been already fixed and set. Since the regulations, since the policies, since the uh, development is happening, and since there are more deliberation in terms of uh, getting more understanding and in terms of local and uh, national level, depending upon the diversity, there is a scope that how we are able to adapt and implement in our own setting. Like just now, there was a question about whether it is necessary or mandatory that we should be having uh, a multidisciplinary thing. Though it is not a must, but the more, it, if it is there, it is better. So wherever it is feasible, so feasibility is another criteria which the NEP 2020 uh, talks about. Though I'm talking particularly about medical education, even though we have a standard uniform regulation across the country, there is a scope given for uh, your local diversity. So depending upon, like ours is a lone medical college in state of Mizoram. Rest of the states, you all know that there are multiple colleges and there are health universities which are looking after uh, all the healthcare related uh, education program. In our uh, state, it is only Zoram Medical College, which is, which, is a medical, uh, which is a medical institution in the state and the only one which has recently started. So uh, it has to start, it has to come and it, we have long way. As Madam said, 2040 will be uh, the time or the timeline which has been given.
Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything wrong? No, now it's it's audible now. Okay, thank you. Hello. Yes. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry. I lost my connection. That's it's why okay. Was... It's okay. <laughs> connection is always a problem these days. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. So I'm sorry for the disruption. Are you able to see me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Can you zoom meeting? So, I'm going to go to the GP. I'm After the regular deliberations. Yes, but all these changes has to happen when the teachers has that kind of training to make the students competent enough. And that is what has been happening in the background with faculty development programs. So since 2009, various nodal and regional centers under the uh, leadership of the previous council, that was Medical Council of India, various basic and advanced courses in medical education technology were conducted and made mandatory for the medical faculty. And now even biomedical research and ethics course has also been made mandatory for faculty development. So these are few of the uh, features which has been added through the medical education regulations, undergraduate as well as postgraduate in the recent times and which are in, in line with the national education policy, which we have been discussing since last one hour uh, in our overview. So if medical education has been able to get through it, definitely, all the professional courses and higher courses will be able to make it. I know it is all evolving. It is not that uh, we have made it all set. It has just started last year and last year is our first batch. We still don't know with this pandemic though, definitely we are lagging behind, but at least we have made a start. And with this start, I suppose that uh, the rest of the professional education can take a cool format and move ahead and progress for our global knowledge uh, economy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, madam. Uh, I'm very sorry. I, I was having some network problem from my end. And for all the participants, our speaker, our uh, speaker to, uh, who had just uh, finished her excellent pres presentation was Dr. Professor Dr. Sati M. Patnik. She is the head of department for the Department of Community Medicine. She is an MD in uh, the um, preventive and social medicine, as well as in family medicine. She also has a diploma in um, community health leadership from Melbourne University, uh, Australia. She has served as a faculty at a medical college in uh, for more than 20 years uh, involving in teaching and research. She has had numerous public publications in uh, national and um, international journals. And as a faculty member as at the uh, medical college, she was involved in the uh, curriculum revision for the MBB uh, undergraduate course uh, for the State Health Science University. And she also has served as a uh, in a managerial and teaching position for various international organizations like UNICEF and WHO. And uh, she, uh, we today, we are very indeed very lucky uh, with all these achievements under her belt. She was able to present her pers perspective uh, on the NEP and uh, in 
with its reference to uh, medical science, medical education, and its allied professional education. Uh, thank you very much, madam. Uh, we, that was a very insightful uh, presentation, very insightful uh, perspective. And if there is any question from the participants, uh, kindly unmute yourself. You may ask the question. Or if there is a, any uh, question that you would like to um, uh, uh, ask, you may put that in the question box. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Kimi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now, uh, if there is for the participants, if uh, you want to um, you know, ask uh, more questions or if you have queries, you may ask so at the end of the uh, this uh, session itself. Now, uh, we will move on to the last part of the session. Um, the last speaker uh, needs no introduction in the nursing community. Uh, actually, she is, I think most of you, if you know her name, uh, you will recognize her. Um, she is, uh, in fact, among uh, the biggest names in uh, nursing uh, education and nursing uh, management in India today. Um, she is none other than uh, Do Professor Dr. Sritimani. She, among many, her, many of her uh, achievements, she was the founder principal of a uh, medical uh, government college of nursing in Bardwan. Uh, uh, just one second. Okay, she was the founder principal of uh, government college of nursing. Uh, in uh, Bardwan, West Bengal. She had started the uh, BSc and MSc nursing course there. And of course she has um, more than uh, 20 years, 26 years of teaching experience at a collegial level in a nursing college. Um, and uh, a total of about around 40 years in service under the health uh, and family welfare department in West Bengal. And she is currently the principal of uh, government College of Nursing uh, and, and uh, under Medical College and Hospital in Kolkata. And she is also the officer in charge at the, um, state, the West Bengal Health Science University. She is in charge of all the curriculum uh, changes and decisions, as well as rules and regulations there. Also, she is the uh, officer on special duty to the nursing directorate. The okay, OS okay. To the nursing director. So please welcome okay. uh, our next speaker. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, giving me such a nice warm welcome. And uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, really, th uh, just uh, I want to give my heartfelt thanks to MCON for organizing such a wonderful. Uh, topic that is the NEP. This is very uh, new one and uh, and also relevant to know also. So I'm really so happy. Um, so uh, without wasting our time because already we are in shortage of time, uh, I would like to start my presentation. So uh, yeah, I can. So are you going to share my slide or I will share? What, one second, ma'am. Huh? Yes, yes. Can I you can... see? Yes. Mm. Where? Okay. Oh, just one second, ma'am. Yes. Okay, that is okay, ma'am. If you may share, because we are uh, having some network problem today. Okay, I okay. I am uh, uh, responsible. Cannot um, uh, share. I think. Okay, I think it's is coming. It, is it coming. visible? Is it yes, visible? Yes, yeah, it's visible. It's visible, ma'am. And audible also. Yes, yes. Mm. Okay. Uh, so I want to tell about the uh, since uh, a long time you have heard from the madam uh, that uh, what is uh, actually NEP is telling uh, in general for general education and uh, madam Shwati has told about the medical education. Now I'm very much interested to share our nursing education. Uh, mm. Here in my presentation, I would just I want to tell about the Mm, how that uh, madam has told that uh, how Rabindranath Tagore, Swami Vivekananda and Mahatma Gandhi told. So from the Rabindranath Tagore, I want to tell that the highest education is that we doesn't merely give us information, 
but makes our life in harmony with all existence yes our nursing education wants that and uh, we know it very well that education is the all round drawing out of the best in child and man body yes. mind spirit that mahatma gandhi told so in if we see our nursing education also this is a professional education which is consciously and systematically planned not only that it is implemented through instruction discipline and aim the harmonious development of the physical intellectual social emotional spiritual and aesthetic power or abilities of our nursing students in order to render so that they can cater the professional nursing care to the people of all ages in all phases of health and illness in a variety of setting we know nurses are working in a variety of setting and not only that in the best or the highest possible manner so there is a as the national education policy is changing here also our nursing education will also change so we'll go to the uh, will we are just transforming india with and we are nursing professions we are also running for the national education policy 2020 that is a contributing to an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all yes our nursing students are also going to get the high quality of nursing education okay uh, excuse me ma'am i will interrupt one second can you put that in a slight mode madam Uh, if you go uh, to the uh, lower part yes 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 okay thank you ma'am yes okay. now it's perfect okay. yes uh -huh. now it's it's good yeah. okay so no no previous slide mm. okay so if we see that the uh, 29th july madam has already told that union cabinet of india they have taken the policy for 2020 but uh, no 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 next wait 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 mm. it's okay ma'am yes okay. Mm. no no okay so the new policy replaces the previous it, it was done in uh, 1986 and so it is now going to be changed and uh, by 2030 we have to uh, in, uh, incorporate the all changes and already major guidelines madam has already uh, told but just related to our nursing i want to tell that the curriculum and pedagogy in nursing school and colleges so learning should be holistic yes in our nursing we are telling about the holistic care so that nep is also telling to provide holistic education integrated yes nursing is already incorporated the integrated teaching inclusive enjoyable and engaging i don't know whether my nursing students are enjoying their nursing uh, curriculum or the nursing uh, learning so we will try next uh, just to implement the nep we will try to make it enjoyable and we will try to engage our students i know our nursing students are always engaged in learning but uh, yes when nep is telling we will try to do that and uh, so it is already madam has told that it is restructured but uh, when we are coming to the four that means uh, 11 and 12 after 10 plus 2 only uh, the students we are get we are going to get so they are mature quite mature students we are getting so shift towards competency based learning and education as nep is telling yes in our nursing education also we our training is such only that is a compete competency based training so we will uh, of course nep is giving importance on that and we will uh, it is uh, relevant to our nursing education also and curriculum content will be reduced in such subject to its essentials to make space for critical thinking and more holistic discovery based yeah i know students nowadays they are very intelligent students they want something not like every day teaching and um, all uh, lectures they don't like they want some discovery based teaching some discussion based just you give the topic they will uh, just problem based learning and all those things and analysis based learning they want so students now the nature of the students they have changed from the previous ones they don't want that, that uh, just uh, the boring uh, only lecture classes so students will be given increased flexibility and choice of subjects to study yeah in our master degree we are preparing basic the basic students but in our master degree we are giving choice uh, whatever they like they anyone can medical surgical nursing or community or pediatric or uh, obstetrics whatever they like or community they can choose it and as per their choice they can go 
So if we see that the other, that is a related to our health, NEP is telling that Angunati centers will be strengthened with high quality infrastructure because we know zero to six years uh, children, they are going to attend the Anganwadi centers. So they will learn from there only that how to wash their hands and before taking food so that all healthy habits they will learn and they will play. So equipment will be there and well-trained Anganwadi workers or teachers will be posted there. Really, it's a very good decision. I want to tell that. And not only that, the EC training means that is the uh, um, our early uh, childhood care and educational training of the Anganwadi worker and teacher will be mentored by the cluster resource centers of the school education department because school education department will take up that because Anganwadi worker, they are going to prepare our uh, children, early uh, children, all their education, their mindset and health the habits all those things so they we need their a very good type of teachers and uh, so we have to prepare that and that is related to our health and all school children shall undergo regular health checkups yeah now in our nursing also there are in community health nursing the school health uh, is there but also we have to organize the school for this uh, health cards will be issued to them am i audible and visible Yes, you are audible, feasible. A very good yes. presentation. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, let us never consider ourselves that we have completed, we have finished our course nurses because we must be learning all of our lives because we know it very well now medical education medical technologies are changing disease patterns are changing nursing cares so many researches are going on and all procedures are changing so we must be learning all of our lives and throughout our lives i want to tell so i would like to uh, discuss about the some issues and challenges related to our nursing education because nursing practice in the 21st century this faces a number of issues and challenges we have seen that the growing population of hospitalized patients who are older and more acutely ill we have seen that nurses are running to give the care to the client and all our clients are telling we are not getting the quality care so we have to see just look at the growing population and so that if the population is growing and they are sick they are coming to the hospital so we have to give care as madam was telling that community health based care to be strategy to be taken i will go later on what nep is telling and what we are going to do that so increasing healthcare cost also, this is a uh, really challenge. And not only that, they need to stay current with and rapid advances in medical knowledge and technology. And we know it very well, Nana. We nurses, whenever we are going to give our uh, treatment, and we have seen that our patients are opening their internet and they have, Madam, why we are not getting the ivermectin? So they are very much updated. So being a nurse, we have to update also ourselves. Not only that, we know it very well, existing shortage of nurses everywhere and an aging nurse workforce. A shortage of nursing faculty, teachers also, all school and colleges, as I am working now in our nursing director, I'm seeing all of them are telling, give me nurse, give me teachers. In all school and colleges, there are shortages of this. And we know that the healthcare delivery system is changing again and again because new models we are we just we are uh, trying to get the new models to get the uh, to cater the service to the primary healthcare level in a um, greater manner so this is also a challenge to the nurses if we see go to the socio demographic cultural diversity economic and political changes and global issue there we will see that the yeah a nursing is also the an aging population increase increased multicultural ethnic diversity which requires increased learning as a nurses we are working everywhere not only in our country own you, you are not only working in your Mizoram, you are going, going to the whole India, not only that abroad. So we have to learn all those ethnic diversity also. Not only that, immigration conflicts, protests everywhere, consequences for access and health care, we have to just face all those things. Not only that, global community, globalization, health issues, global nursing networks are really very active now. So being a nurse, sitting in a corner, but uh, you have to update yourself, you have to know, and we have to work together. How can we just face these issues and how can we address these challenges? Not only the social, economical and political changes are there always. So 
just as a nurse how we can stay uh, as a non political manner how could how can i can we cater our healthcare services now, and multi dimensional content client care and clinical learning sites these are also issues and rapid knowledge exp expansion increasing use of technology and informatics in education and practice is going on so choosing the most effective electro electronic and technology option our uh, young nurses are very smart smarter group so they know they are always electronically using the gadgets always in their hand not only that patients are also using so and information overload virtually unlimited global resources and global research opportunities and issues so being a nurse we have to face address all those issues identifying current and accurate information whatever we have learned we can't tell that the we we have done in that way just holding the baby in a upside but we can't say now because you have to current and accurate information you have to know and rapidly outdated you are just, all those things are going uh, rapidly outdated so you have to just current and uh, have the accurate information and all, all the clients they have expanded expectations from the nurses but we have limited time rapid response expected limit little time for reflection and not only that expansion of nursing informatics content and skill development all those things are really issues and challenges not only that in our nursing we it is a practice based competency outcomes and evidence based content now it is researches are going on and we we know that the um, our we are just evidence based practice we are going to do that because whatever we have to do we have to go scientifically so learning focused on core practice competency outcomes yeah. professional skills beyond technical psychomotor skills core practice competencies multiple conflicting version which which one to use just now so there is a need to do the research and to do to select which one is better one so that we can use that one integration of evidence based standards research findings into practice yeah our nursing is really progressing so much so that so many researches are going on and evidence based practice are published and uh, so that we can just use utilize all those findings in our nursing practice not only that emphasis on critical thinking and problem solving now not only we are just giving the handhold and support but we are allowing our students for the critical thinking and problem solving approach they have to do so changes in standard and ensure patient safety these are also our issues so performance based competency learning and objective assessment methods are there oski ospi are there so uh, we have to think that the multiple teaching learning methods we have to use not only the blackboard and uh, one teaching method so interactive collaborative methods in class and out of class projects and problem based learning increasing self responsibility of the students accountability for learning and competence not only the teachers will be always um, after the students but students will also be proactive to learn to be competent and so interprofessional learning using electronic devices media to access resources all those things you have to use so competency assessment based on performance examination also we have to do and the uh, not a bias type of examination we have to do whatever we have to but i know always nursing students are telling that teacher is biased and teacher is giving marks to who whoever is good or giving uh, some coming to the closer but now the time has come when the just competency assessment based performance examinations will be conducted and specified portfolio documentation standards based assessment methods will come and emphasis on patient safety all those things we have to do so if you see the community focused interdisciplinary approach nursing only alone cannot do anything so doctors nurses social workers and teachers we have to angradi workers we have to just collaborative uh, approach will be used so interprofessional collaborative learning how can we learn how can we what uh, others uh, they have learned so that there will be some uh, collaborative uh, methods to learn all those things diverse alternative health practices uh, and influence of culture already madam has told that only nursing only allopathy not that all alternative health practices we have to know broad scope of nursing that is the clinical approach increasing use of diverse experiences 
throughout community continuum from acute care of health promotion from hospitals to home to rural to global settings everywhere not only that multiple teachers preceptors staff instructors part time with varying abilities and time, uh, they will teach and so that because due to the time constant time constraints so that and not only the students will love it that multiple approaches and if we see that the patient centered care that means the engagement safety and privacy of them all expect value clients nowadays they are expecting value and individualized care quality individual respect consideration attention and privacy issues so nursing we have to change our views also so all those issues if we go to address so we will see how how much nep is trying to cover all those things patient initiative for involvement and protection balance standards and preferences because if the my client expectation is that uh, if he is able to do all those things so uh, but he is not doing he is expecting that nurse will do all those things no orm self care nowadays our nursing theories are telling orm self care theory this is telling that only help those who need your uh, help otherwise no need to keep care who is who are well so all those things we have to think and we have to initiate patient initiative this will come in the nursing uh, in education not only that increase in there is increased litigation medical nursing errors and focus on safe and competent patient care so increased individual responsibility accountability for learning and practice this is not like that we have done the error nowadays there are so many litigations so we have to be very careful while we are giving care my previous speaker has already told about the ethics and bioethical concerns yeah in our nursing also madam uh, alternative solution to ethical dilemmas nurses have to address issues regarding diverse beliefs and disputes yes nurses are always there with the clients and 365 days and 24 into 7 so they have to know the diverse beliefs of the clients and they have to give care provide care according to that disputes regarding the biotechnology bioengineering in healthcare so all those things nurses have to know because they are the person who can who are always there in the world so who can give their expertise opinion to all those things many gray zones instead of black and white absolutes and not only that separate professional practice responsibilities from personal opinions consequences for competence and we have to think about the we have to integrate into professional practice acceptance of the individual's rights of choice uh, here i can remember one thing uh, dr bhaduri dr aparna bhaduri our uh, known teacher she was uh, she was admitted in bmb la hospital and she was telling that it's my individual right of choice i don't want to take now um, for the um, that is um, kidney dialysis i will not take dialysis doctors are telling on a madam it is very much important she was telling i know it very well that patients have their individual right of choice regarding life and death issues so don't tell me uh, so really uh, we when the doctors they were, they were bound to stop it so healthcare methods respect tolerance for patient decisions we have to being a nurse we have to go for that and ethical competencies for students also so uh, this now it is nursing training is not like before that whatever we will tell students will listen and student will do that not like that students are now also they uh, they have some they they know their ethical points of view okay the standards of quality care and patient rights issue we have to think and we have to incorporate in our nursing educational programs so if we see that the increasing shortage of nurses and faculty i have told again and again that clinical there are limitations in clinical learning heavy workload and if you are taking a um, uh, just a one uh, case presentation you are taking and other uh, uh, clinical nurses are running here and there and due to heavy workload really our teaching is also disrupted using preceptors part time instructors less one to one help for the students uh, i don't know due to shortage of our teachers and uh, who students who are really they want one to one help i don't know how much we are able to provide them help so the consequences for learning and patient safety so we have to take care of my all my students individually so that we can prepare a good nurse shortage of qualified faculty also i don't know they are 
be taking the training from anywhere and they are begin becoming the faculty so now it is nep and in our state also we are trying to check the faculties um competency so that uh, they are uh, because really qualified faculties uh, they are due to their aging retiring and increased part time instructor and uh, there is a shortage of a good teachers what we can tell and really uh, nowadays the teachers are not so competent not so they don't love to teach the students that is a problem so national and global it's a not only in our state it's a national and global problem so influence quality education and future nursing staff because we have to prepare a competent nurse if my teacher is not competent teacher is not knowledgeable how students will be so much competent so need for increased educational funding to teach my teachers and so that my teachers will be able to teach my students students need more clinical learning more responsibility for self directed learning seek assistance from others and increased use of simulation technique required to validate already all those things are there required uh, to validate initial and continuing uh, competencies so it is already there nowadays we will see that the disasters violence and terrorism all those things are there which was not uh, present in earlier training new learning skills required for major natural disaster events you see covid 19 how my nurses are working and will all ppt and uh, for the hours eight hours whenever they are in the uh, ward how they are giving the nursing care so all those these are the challenges nurses have to take care new program options new courses and new skills needed for emergency responders so they have to be trained they have to update all those to learn all those educations and uh, violence sir now it is increased in our society in homes in workplace schools abuse are there against women and children so being a nurse we have to address all those issues so in our in our nursing education i don't know madam was telling experience matter of experience yes in our education i don't know when uh, how much we will be able to uh, prepare you on all those issues but you have to learn from your experience so preparedness for terrorism skills program for the first responders increased anxiety and uncertainty my nurses you have to update yourself you have to learn from your environment from and you have to experience yourself so increasing professional and personal responsibility lifelong learning to meet professional expectations certification requirement as madam has already discussed all those points increasing competency assessment in workplace and changes in standard for quality care and practice high stress from competing demands of school home meeting competency required everybody is asking i need a competent nurse so if we see that the what my nep is telling and what my, what is our plan so as per nep uh, national education policy they are telling the certain professional stream we only have a four year duration for the undergraduate degree yes in our nursing council they have planned single entry government of india has also planned single entry in nursing course that is the phasing out of gnm course and introduction of four years basic bsc nursing course and i i know all the states uh, they have incorporated and uh, in our west bengal also we are going to incorporate from that 2021 this is the last year we have admitted our gnm students for next year onwards only bsc nursing students will be there because we have to implement all national education policy by 2 2030 so 2030 so we have to start it now only because uh, if there are some good things if all graduate nurses are there in the uh, ward so that is the basic level to provide the nursing care so client will get a comprehensive whatever we have told that the in our challenges that the comprehensive care so i think they will get it and not only that importance to uh, nep has told that importance to practical assignments skill development yeah nursing is a skill based training we know it very well because we just we are from the very beginning as madam was telling that from the mbbs course uh, this last year onwards they have they are sending their first year mbbs students to the clinical field but in our nursing we have already it was there from the first year only we are giving them uh, sending them to the clinical field so this is a skill based training only not only that we are giving their practical assignments 
case study, case presentation with the clients only. And how, what are the methods, uh, nursing procedures, how can we do? All, everything we are giving in the clinical field only. So this is uh, nothing NEP is telling, we are already doing this. And now NEP is telling that we have to empower nurses and bridge the demand and supply of gap of doctors. Here, the to empower nurses mean to give the power to prescribe, to take the decision and clinical decision making skill, everything. Yes, Government of India and INC has already initiated a nurse practitioner in critical care and nurse practitioner in midwifery course. They will be able to prescribe, they will be able to take decision, solve the problems. Because you see, during delivery in midwifery, if they wait for a doctor and if they are unable to provide the uh, just use the forceps and to give the um, uh, to uh, use the other uh, methods of uh, um, PPH control, so it will be late. So in the critical care unit also, nurse practitioner will be able to um, just uh, government of India is empowering nurses and INC has also um, uh, allowed so that the already we are we have started so that no need for doctors and doctors will come later on for any complications but preliminary wellness centers we are starting where the nurses will be there uh, to pro uh, just for the all antenatal checkups and everything only the uh, just uh, complicated cases will be referred to a doctor as all developed countries they are also doing like that only so NEP has included that one for the nurses and single common entrance exam for all colleges uh, as madam was also telling NET and in our nursing also a few states that is West Bengal in uh, for all government and nursing colleges for the BSc nursing course we are only one common entrance test that is conducted by the our joint entrance board and so uh, to all nursing colleges students are coming so we can maintain a standard so that under from one entrance test if the students are coming a minimum standards will be maintained so in that way that is our plan of implementations that is the NEP has also told for the nation single common entrance exam so if we see that the NEP has told that ramp up digital learning yeah digital learning is a just uh, it is already practiced in our nursing education and uh, in during it is insane intensified now during this uh, COVID pandemic situation. I know all the students still they are using their mobile or computer for the digital classes. So this is this time really we have already implemented NEP's guidelines and the education policy NEP educational policy also talks about the need to create professional development pathways for nurses with different levels of qualifications. So and if we see that the uh, really it's not there all my msc nurses uh, are also working as a staff nurse and on gnm and all of them are in the same level with the different qualifications but uh, cnes and renewals are also to be done to update nurses if we see that the dual role of nurses has come because uh, in dual role the nursing superintendent or a CNO, chief nursing officer, will be the at least master degree qualified at uh, like the principal of a college of nursing. So it is interchangeably. So we have already uh, already conducted meeting for the dual role. Uh, slowly, slowly, we have to implement. Um, actually, if you see if uh, a qualified person, if uh, sees in the in hospital head as CNO and all uh, uh, reader professor and uh, our senior lecturers they are going to clinical field and they are in charge of a ward hospital so everything will be changed and students and all nurses that means that uh, who are staff nurses they are basic basic bsc trained so the students who are going to clinical field will not face any problem because my staff nurses will be able to teach my students and clinical inst instructors are also there as a, they will help the students and also the staff. So this thing will really, I think that it will change the um, role of the nurses and obviously it will uplift the care pattern and we'll be able to just remove the gap between our theory and practice because whatever we are teaching, in the school of nursing or college of nursing and whatever students are practicing in the clinical field in the hospital there are some differences so if my teachers are all of them are responsible in the word for the word so they know what to indent 
and what to use so uh, students will get everything and students will learn and the learning will be better manner i have seen that the doctors when they are md in doctorate they are being boss and they are going to the clinical field they are taking care of clients but in our nursing when they are master degree holder and phd holder they are going away from the clinical side so this is really just creating a gap between the theory and practice nursing education is really taking away my uh, learned nurses from the nursing care so if they come back to the clinical field and provide the nursing care really i think it will just create bring a change and uh, of course the create the professional developmental pathway also and slowly slowly we think we hope that it will come and it will be implemented and if we see that the new technologies to be incorporated like artificial intelligence machine learning blockchain smart boards handle computing devices adapting computer testing for students development and other forms of educational software and hardware yes this said uh, during this covid pandemic situation all all uh, whole country has seen the robotic nursing care now robot nurse is going to uh, give the all those things and uh, just isolation patients who are there and robot nursing are there yeah we are starting and not only that i think all the colleges and schools are using now smart boards just you, you whatever statistics you are doing if you want to see one cell just you can use your smart board and students will learn in a bet better manner not only that multimedia learning that is how my heart is working if students are just looking the three dimensional aids and they learn so learning will be better they will understand the physiology of everything so it's a really we are already it is a uh, in a process and uh, computer based uh, teaching computer based examination online examinations it is already under process and this time our university west bengal university of health sciences they have already adapted this computer based um, examination also and the uh, time and uh, really uh, there were some problem but uh, we, we we were able to do that so these are the things already nep has told and it is also under our nursing education planning and a few things we have already implemented and uh, another thing nep has told that universities will play an active role in conducting research all universities will offer phd and masters program in core areas yes um almost all health universities are offering phd programs and research being um, just given importance and uh, all the colleges are in the from the gnm level and from the bsc graduation level only all researches they are exposed to research and um, uh, master degree students are conducting a very good research nowadays and phd uh, so many nurses are doing phds and they are growing uh, slowly slowly so all the uh, i don't know whether mizoram university has adapted the phd course for nurses or not but all other health universities they have already adapted the phd uh, for the nurses in our west bengal university of health sciences all doctors nurses and all other paramedicals they are going to the one individual one entrance test for phd so here we can see that the all of us in a same level Uh, so whenever you are going for your phd just you can check yourself the where are you so where my nursing whether my nursing education has prepared you in a proper manner or not so these all those things that is the nep has told uh, last of all i want to tell that the quality education and skilled nursing care as nep has told and respectful individualized care to be provided yes it is to overcome the challenges of acute shortage in providing skilled service a huge number of nursing institutions are coming up uh, i don't know about uh, mizoram how many nursing school and colleges are growing but in our west bengal we have seen that the 41 only one nursing college was there but now 42 nursing colleges are there x uh, plus c uh four nursing colleges under um, different university also so you think that the 45 nursing colleges are there and schools are also coming up uh, um, uh, growing up so just to, to overcome the problem of the shortage of manpower and not only that respectful care is already included in the present nursing curriculum 
previously we used to tell uh, used to think that the patients are our uh, guinea pig now it is days has changed and as a national education policy also that's telling that uh, individualized respectful care already we have included the respectful maternity care in our uh, obstetrics and all the all other areas they have also included the respectful care so these all those things uh, in the as per national education policy how we have some points we have already incorporated in our nursing education and some points we are already under process to implement this these are the things i uh, just i want to tell that nep has taken yes there are a need to change the national education policy from time to time because 1986 is a very uh, far away and so everything is changed so there was really a need for the change in educational policy and uh, as well as in our nursing education policy also so we are going to implement that so thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to tell about the nursing educational um, policy thank you thank you ma'am for your insightful uh, presentation ma'am there are a few questions uh, yes let's uh, see uh, in the chat box and um, uh, there someone asked um, at this uh, hour of uncertainty can there be uniformity in nursing education because uh, the uh, phasing out of uh, GNM uh, education, the GNM course, uh, recently there was a, an order from uh, the central government that uh, this, uh, the GNM uh, you know, course will not be phased out as, as of now. So what is your opinion oh, huh. on that? Um, because there are uh, at least GNM courses for three years. After mm. three years, only we can get a huge number of nurses. So at this moment, uh, if you stop the GNM course, mm. a huge number of nurses, how can you work? Uh, how can you get? So uh, for the completion of four years BSc nursing course, four years are needed. So um, just to stop this uh, uh, gap, shortage of nurses, and uh, we have to continue uh, up to up to some time. So, but uh, in our West Bengal, we have taken the decision that uh, we will start. Uh, this is the last year for the GNM, and uh, next year onwards we will take the only BSc will continue. All the school of nursing uh, will be converted to college of nursing. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, slowly, slowly, we yes. have to do that because yes. uh, if we see the future. Okay, ma'am. Thank you for that. And there's a one more, uh, one more uh, question. Like, what is your opinion sending the students to clinical at this stage of the pandemic? The government uh, is encouraging close down of institution uh, in West Bengal. What is the situation? How? Yeah. How? Uh, uh, here at this situation, COVID situation, I will tell my students, my teachers to be very active. Uh, do uh, students let them stay at home and you just uh, make uh, your all videos. You just uh, make the video and send it to the students. I know it very well though, if the students are not observing all your techniques just with you, they are not with you, they will not be able to learn properly. But what to do, some at least they will learn what are the pro procedure. So you just do the procedure and make the video and send the students. So don't expose now, only the final year students because delivery, uh, normal delivery, they have to learn. So using all those PPE kits, they uh, students finally a students only can go to the clinical field and uh, learn the uh, conduct the deliveries normal deliveries okay. already they used to use the ppe kit during delivery so now also they will go and because they have to finish they are the final year they have to yeah. go back to the society to serve so right. without yeah. how can we leave them okay okay and just uh, one more uh, question is there. Uh, dual role in nursing is good, but will the pay and the status of faculty be still equivalent with that of the other discipline? Mm, other discipline means uh, nurses. Like, uh, and... like in, uh, I, I think, uh, medical uh, professionals, like uh, medical doctors and... Uh, colleges, uh, faculty. Colleges. No, no, doctors are always going. Whenever they are boss also, MD, PhD, they are going to clinical field. But our our qualified nurses are going. So I mm -hmm. want to tell that uh, already um, INC has given that uh, all everything is clearly given that uh, senior lecturer, 
what role they will play in the clinical field uh, they will act as dna supervisor all and uh, um, uh, clinical instructor how they will work and all those things they already inc has given clearly about the dual role so you can have your meeting and you can see that the teachers if they go to the clinical field really it will it just it will make difference in nursing care thank you ma'am for answering all our questions i think and now we are at the end of the session and i would like to close uh, the the session with a small with a short um, vote of thanks uh, to dr uh, professor dr lalbi adikin hamte professor dr sati m patki professor dr smriti mani uh, we are we at college of nursing mizoram college of nursing we are humbled and extremely grateful for your kind acceptance to be a part of our uh, webinar uh, to be our speakers today we you, we know that you all hold you know very important positions in your respective uh, uh, institutions and you are you have a, a really full schedule uh, but despite of your busy schedule you are here uh, to um, uh, perform your duty as uh, our speakers uh, for today's webinar so for that we are uh, we are extremely grateful for your support of our uh, educational endeavor thank you all so much and also thank you for to all the participants for being here we are actually our capacity is full uh, we many people they message and they said that we cannot join because the capacity is full so today has been a success thanks to all of you uh, god bless you and uh, all the best so goodbye goodbye thank you very thanks much. to you too thank you all Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.